Welcome back to A Maker's Eye. On this channel I talk a little bit about uh, vloggy type stuff and travel and also a little bit about photographic stuff and it's the photographic stuff that I'm talking about today because I want to talk about traveling light, packing a bag, what to take and what to leave out. That's coming up next. Hi everybody, so yes, uh, don't worry, I'm not confusing my two channels. I am in the workshop. Uh, I'm here because, well, partly because I'm repairing some old sewing machine covers. Uh, that one from 1904, don't ask. Uh, also, I wanted to have uh, an overhead shot in this as well, which is easier to do here because I'm all set up for it. So, uh, packing a bag to go away used to be easy back when I was a professional photographer. You just pack whatever you need and then you take a spare of everything. Doesn't matter what it costs, doesn't matter how many bags it covers, doesn't matter how, it, how much it weighed. Uh, you had people to help you out with all that stuff. Um, when you're going away on a trip that isn't a photographic trip, that is perhaps a family holiday, then you have to be a little bit more circumspect about your packing. And I just thought I'd take you through, uh, I, you might know, I've just come back from, uh, me and my wife have just come back from a couple of weeks in Venice, uh, and I did the whole trip with just this one carry-on bag. Uh, during that two-week trip, it was a family trip, it was a holiday, uh, but obviously I didn't want to waste the opportunity, and there were some specific things that I wanted to shoot video and photographs on. During that fortnight, I shot over a terabyte, uh, not including what I did on my phone, over a terabyte of video and photographs. I recorded two podcasts on the road, uh, uh, and I edited a couple of videos down at the same time, and I did it all from the contents of this one bag. It's worth bearing in mind as well, when I talk about travelling light, I mean light by volume rather than weight. Uh, that is uh, about seven and a half kilos, about 16 some pounds. So wasn't a lightweight bag to lug around, but it had everything in it that I needed. Uh, so let's go through that bag now and see what I had uh, to, do that, uh, to do that work. So before we start, I just want to say that I'm not going to turn this into some sort of gear-driven channel, uh, but this video is going to be a little bit about the stuff that I used for this particular trip. And the next video is going to be about a gift idea thing. Uh, you guys who are familiar with my other channel will know that I do a, a like a gift idea around the Christmas time, the holiday time, every year. <sighs> and it's a good way of sort of passing on some useful hints and tips and earning a little bit of affiliate income, which goes towards the channel uh, and helps me continue to make these videos. Anyway, uh, so this video is a little bit gearish, and so will the next one. After that, we'll get back into doing the sort of vloggy travel type stuff, because I've got lots more to come on that. But to start with, uh, this bag is one that I bought specifically for this two-week trip. It is a little bit smaller than I would have liked, but the next size up is a little bit bigger than I really wanted. And in fact, I managed to pack everything in here. As I said, it's light in terms of volume, not space. Travelling light, though, doesn't mean that you have to travel light-headed. So obviously all the bigger stuff that I didn't specifically need with me, like the sort of gorilla pods and the stands for the microphones and all that sort of stuff, that could actually go into the suitcase and be checked in. So this is just the sort of carry-on bag that I had with me, and it's a, it really is a great size. Uh, in the outer pouch here, I had just sort of general cables to have with me, charging cables, um, spare microphone cable, that sort of thing, always useful to have. And then in the, oops, in this little pocket here, again, it is a, a carry-on bag. So I've got my personal Kindle, and I've got, oops, one of my notebooks, because it's always handy to be able to scribble notes, and you can just squeeze a 13-inch MacBook Pro in here as well. That's really useful to be able to do that. Um, I am a big iPad fan, and I do carry an iPad with me, but because I'm recording a couple of podcasts, the one thing that uh, iPad really doesn't do very well, unless you've got a, a solid internet connection, uh, is to be able to record two audio streams coming in. Uh, so that meant me taking a laptop. Plus, I wanted to edit some video, and you know, editing on on a, a laptop is definitely easier. So that all goes into this outer pouch here, and then on the inside, then we get to where the compromises start. In terms of cameras, um, basically, I want to take the best camera body that I could. I didn't, as I say, this wasn't a, a photographic trip, so I didn't want to take you know, multiple D 
DSLR bodies and lenses. Ideally, I just wanted to take one body and lens. I am on the Micro Four Thirds system. Uh, <laughs> an awful lot of my gear is in here. I'm shooting this on uh, my what was my prime gear before earlier this year. Uh, uh, so basically, I wanted to take the, the best camera body that I could, and that's uh, the Lumix GH5 that I've got. In terms of lenses, uh, I do have a bit of choice. Um, the one I'm using here is a really nice uh, 24 to 80 equivalent fixed aperture 2.8. Good lens, but I knew that when I was going to Venice, whilst I'd appreciate the 24mm, uh, 80mm just isn't going to cut it. I've got some very specific things in mind which really look good on a long lens. So I wanted the longest lens I had. The kit lens is really good. Uh, it's uh, 24 to 120 equivalent, but far and away the best lens for a trip like this is the one that I took, which is a 14 to 140, a 28 to 280 equivalent. Um, compromise, again, I would have loved to have had a 12mm at the wide end, but they don't make a 24 to 240 equivalent. They just make the uh, 28 to 280. So, you know, that's one of those things. But that was the, the camera for me, no, no question about that. I didn't want to get bogged down taking a tripod with me. I've uh, had a couple of little gorilla pods. Uh, and as I said, these are the things that I can check in a bag easily because I don't need to actually have those with me. Obviously, I don't want to put delicate things like cameras and lenses uh, and batteries into a check bag. Um, because of one body and one lens, you get a little bit, I get a little bit twitchy about what if something fails. So I did want to have some kind of backup with me. So what I did was I took my little, I've got a little compact camera. Um, again, Micro Four Thirds system uh, means that the lenses are actually interchangeable. So in two ways, this gave me a backup in, in case anything went wrong with, with this. It didn't perform absolutely flawlessly. But also because these are both Micro Four Thirds removable lenses, as silly as it looks, I can actually get a, a 12 mil onto this body. So if I needed to, I could get a 12 mil, 24 mil equivalent lens on this. I, in the end, I didn't actually didn't feel I needed it. So it all actually worked out really well. And I didn't actually use this one hardly at all. Uh, there was one one shot in the apartment that I did. Uh, where it would have been, where it, I, I did use it, although I didn't actually end up using using the video. So that's the the sort of backup camera, if you like. Uh, as a third backup camera, I took my little um, action camera. This is a, a, an Akaso. I'll talk about this specifically in another video. Um, one of the things that uh, has come up in the comments is that people were unhappy in the previous video. If you've seen the previous Venice video, people will weren't overly impressed by the amount of uh, camera movement I was getting with this little camera. I, I particularly dislike having the uh, stabilization on in this, in this little camera, but it is a, a remarkably good camera and we'll talk about this uh, in another video specifically. Uh, this will shoot 4K 30p. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad. Uh, and it's just sort of completely self-contained and completely pocketable. So I have that with me as well. Uh, in here we move to microphones. So I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro as the main camera mic. Uh, I've got the oh, little Rode Video Micro as the backup mic. Uh, no batteries in that one, so that'll work either way. I've got a little Zoom H1, handy audio recorder. Again, that's for backups whilst recording the podcast. I've got my main uh, mobile podcasting mic. This is a Samsung. It's very similar to the Audio-Technica ATR2100. It worked directly off USB, which is really useful. So I could just plug that straight into my laptop and get that working. In here, I've got the uh, backup lavalier microphone. Uh, for that, I've got a spare... Oops, I'll keep one of these in the suitcase. A uh, little backup battery, just in case you run short of power. As I say, this is the... It's also my carry-on bag. A couple of pencils, always come in handy. And then the top over, we've got a general sort of dumping ground for all kinds of other stuff. A pair of noise-cancelling headphones, they can uh, uh, do double duty. If one of the other microphones do go, then 
the microphone on that isn't actually bad. Uh, I wouldn't use them as monitor headphones, but they do a reasonably enough job. Uh, I've also got my personal um, Bluetooth headphones. Again, they will do at a pinch. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to level up a recording with those, but they will do at a pinch uh, in order to just make sure that you're getting sound. Uh, uh, a two terabyte SSD, uh, USB SSD. Um, I took that with me because the laptop, although it's got an SSD in it, it is relatively old. It's only 256 meg. And as I said, I think I shot all best part of a terabyte of, of video and audio on this. Uh, so I wanted it all on a separate drive, basically. Uh, that way, it's a fast drive, it's an SSD, it's USB 3. And it works, you know, just fine. It also means that I can then just plug that straight back into my main editing uh, iMac when I come back uh, and just pick up those uh, uh, those main files and just carry on editing uh, with those libraries. Uh, elsewhere in this oops, uh, cable for that, you've got a little sack full of batteries in here, spare batteries for the main camera and the small camera uh, in there. What else have we got? Oh, yeah, spare pair of glasses. Obviously, when traveling, you always need spare glasses. Uh, more spare microphones. Whoops. More spare headphones and microphones. And the spare microphone cable as well. And then we've got a little uh, phone holder, phone mount. Because, you know, phones are really useful for shooting little bits and pieces. Uh, again, a spare little quick release plate with a cold shoe on it in case you need to put a microphone somewhere or something else. And a little compact travel charger. Uh, folds up completely flat. Really, really useful. Uh, but obviously it's a UK one, so you need to be somewhere where you can use UK plugs. But I keep it with me in the, in the bag wherever I go. Uh, and that was pretty much the kit that I took with me to record uh, all that video and shoot all those pictures. Uh, there will be more coming through on that uh, from that series over the next few weeks so keep your eyes peeled for those but that's it that's how I traveled light by compromising by accepting the image stabilization in the big camera for example instead of taking a gimbal uh, you might decide that the comp compromise for you is to just use your phone and a gimbal and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but for me on this trip I wanted the best quality I could get and I was prepared to accept this level of compromise to get it, as I say, uh, about seven and a half kilos in total. Not outrageous. And obviously I didn't have it all out with me at the same time. Most of the time I was just going out with the camera on a tripod, on the gorilla pod, on the microphone on top of that when I was shooting sort of vloggy style stuff out and about. So there are six regions in Venice, or Sesteri, those six fingers you see on the front of every gondola represent each one of those regions. Or just using the tiny little camera uh, when it was uh, really wet, which was a lot on that particular uh, that particular trip. Morning. Not your usual week in the workshop today, because I'm somewhere else. I'm just walking to the end of my road. And I think I'll leave it there for this one. As I say, I'm not going to turn this into some big, heavy, gear-driven channel, but I thought you might be interested in what you can get uh, for a two-week trip and what you can get away with in terms of equipment uh, when you're traveling light. Especially if you want to try and do decent quality video and audio and maybe podcast recording and video editing on the road like this. Uh, you can get away with quite a, a minimal set of equipment. You probably could get away with doing everything like this just on your phone, but it depends what sort of compromises you're prepared to make. And for me, I wanted to be able to real record podcasts, which means I can't use iOS, unfortunately. And it means that uh, I wanted to shoot longer lens stuff, so I couldn't really just get away with my phone. But uh, uh, that's my compromises. Yours will be different. Uh, that's it, though, for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care.